Hello, my name is Michael Smith. This is another in a set of short video tutorials explaining the basics required to do procedural text textures in Blender. The first tutorials, we've gone over what is a procedural texture and what are texture coordinates, uh, which texture coordinates do we have available and how do they work? Uh, how do you manipulate those texture coordinates so that you can stretch, rotate, move, scale the texture that you're creating? Uh, now we're going to get to slightly more interesting stuff. We're going to get to the built-in procedural textures. So uh, a lot of these, probably all of them, although I haven't tried, you can uh, generate yourself if you want to. Um, but the built-in textures are really good building blocks for generating a lot of fairly straightforward procedural textures. So we'll take a look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the shading window as always. As always, I'm going to click in the top left corner and close out these side windows because we're not going to use them. I'm going to left click on this and press delete because I don't want the cube. And we're going to add a mesh plane and press seven. So I'm looking down on it and we can start playing around with our procedural texture. I'm going to select the existing material. And as per our initial tutorial, I'm going to do an input for texture coordinates and we're going to use the UV coordinates. So as you remember, these UV coordinates go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Uh, they do have a Z value, but that's always 0. Um, and uh, the, those are converted to a color where X is red, Y is green, and Z is blue. So what you see along the Y axis is the Y color, green, go, gets stronger in that direction. The X color, red, gets stronger in this direction, and they mix together in that direction. So. Okay, having gone over that, now we're going to try some textures. So if you go to add texture, there's a bunch of these. I'm going to pick the ones I actually like. So we're going to start with the noise texture. So I'll plug that in there. Okay, so what is the noise texture? So we're going to zoom in a bit. The noise texture is a random texture, but where each point isn't completely random, it's randomly moving up or down relative to the points next to it. So uh, this isn't just static. You're not just getting random values everywhere. You're getting more like clouds or plasma. It ha I'm not going to go into all the details of everything you can do here, but uh, if you use the FAC, that's usually the grayscale, and then color, so this will be one value. The color is going to be three values, red, green, blue. You can also use them as X, Y, Z. So why would you want to use this? <laughs> well, anytime you have random, you want random values, and you want them to create randomly peaks and valleys effectively, this is really useful. So the most obvious version is if you want to create hills and valleys or you want to create a water line around islands or something like that, uh, you can take the factor out, which is a value from 0 to 1, and you can say, well, I'm going to choose all the points where that value is less than 0.5, and that's going to create effectively a water line where these white areas are the peaks and these black areas are the troughs. And if I point everything, be pick, sorry, everything below 0.5, I get outlines of my uh, islands. So that's one example. There's a bunch of other examples. Key bit, you want a random value for each point, but you want that random value to be related and next to the value that's next to it. Okay, what if you don't want that? So add texture. Now we're going to do white noise. So this is truly random. And this is a little hard to see. So I'm going to go to, uh, I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it that well. I'm going to go to add color. Uh, brightness contrast, and we're going to dial the contrast up and the brightness down. Okay, there you go. That's a bit easier. So what this does is it produces a three-dimensional value, XYZ, RGB, either, um, between zero and one for each value that's completely random. So no point in here is related to any other point. If you zoom in, it just keeps going. Uh, so this is useful, one, if you want to simulate an old television, of course, um, but more usually what this is, uh, this looks like that noise, uh, I may be dating myself here, uh, more usually what you want to do is let's say you have a collection of procedurally generated tiles. Uh, they could literally be bathroom tiles or things like wood floor panels, that kind of stuff. Uh, you don't want all of them to look identical. Uh, so if you want a per tile value, you can do something like take the center of that tile, put it as the input to white noise, and then take the color out or the value out, which is just a, a scalar, a, a float from zero to one instead of a vector. Uh, and now you have a random number and or numbers, and you can use those to tweak that particular tile. So for wood floors, you could change the coloring to be darker or lighter, so they're not all the same. You could change the amount of naughtiness or waviness or whatever. So this is super useful for that purpose. Use it all the time. Okay, that is white noise. The next one I'm going to look at is the Voronoi or Voronoi. I, I actually don't know. I should look these things up before making videos, but I'm not going to. 
so we put this in. I'm going to turn off randomness for a second just so I can show you what this does. So what this creates is basically a checkerboard pattern, uh, and it goes to the trouble of giving you essentially a random uh, tuple, three three values, red, green, blue, for every single tile in, in that checkerboard, which is nice. There's some other outputs here. I'm not going to get into it. We'll use this later. Um, but uh, the other thing it does, if you dial up randomness, is it takes those tiles and it keeps the basic tiliness of them, but makes them non-square. So they're still geometric. They're still... What's the term? Not pal parallelograms, whatever. They're, they're still, they're still got straight lines, um, but they're not exactly a checkerboard. So anytime you want to repeat something in a way where it's it's got tiles, but you don't want those tiles to be a particular shape, um, this is a really useful way to do that. And we'll talk about ways to do that. Um, so take away Voronoi, Voronoi, don't know, texture. If you want a checkerboard or you want a checkerboard where things are a little bit wonky, uh, this is the texture you want. And there's a bunch of extra features we'll get into in future tutorials. Next one, add texture, uh, do, 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 one second. I'll pick on it eventually. There we go, brick texture. Took my brain a while to catch up. Okay, so brick texture, you often will just generate a brick texture without this, but uh, sometimes it's convenient to just have it for you. So a brick texture, it basically looks like bricks. You can use it to model a brick texture. Uh, I don't. Um, but you can also play around with like the scale. You can play around with like brick width and a bunch of other things, row height. You can remove the mortar. You can change the colors. Uh, if you play around with this, this does look like a lot of things that are tiled, that have offset rows. And you'll see that each value has its own color. So you can use them to do things like if you have a wood texture, let's say it's a picture texture rather than a procedural texture, you can actually use this to manipulate that and put it on a floor. That's what people commonly do. Uh, so uh, if you have a procedural wood texture, you can do the same thing. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do it right here. But this gives you a way to generate a bunch of tiles where each tile has a slightly different variation in color. Uh, and even do mortar between them if that's what you want. And you can do it immediately without having to work out all the math, which is pretty nice. Okay, delete that one. And then we're going to do, I think, one more. There are more in here. I just don't use them that often. So the other one we're going to look at is the Mus Musgrave texture. So this is another random texture. Uh, maybe I'll actually look up the math and do, I'm curious and do a video on it. I don't know what the math for this is, but... If you want blobby randomness, so the noise texture gives you kind of like cloud blob textures. Uh, this gives you this kind of blob texture. And in fact, if you fiddle around with the settings, you can do a bunch of other interesting things with it. But you want, you want blobby and you want it to transition from black to white in a fairly abrupt way. Musgrave does that. So some, some things you might use it for. If you want like scuffs on a floor, so you want... Uh, intermittent blobs that, of roughness on your floor where someone's like, you know, it's dirty or someone scuffed it or whatever. This can be a useful texture and there are other variations of that. So sometimes I'm going to use uh, noise. Sometimes I'll use Musgrave and we'll do another tutorial with some of the details on this. Okay, and that's it. So just to review, uh, these are the built-in textures. We've looked at a few. All of them are going to be under add texture. White noise, you want a completely random value for each position. Uh, the noise texture, you want a random value, but you want it to be a gradient from the points around it. You want it to be next around the points around it. Musgrave, kind of like noise texture, but more blobby and more abrupt than noise texture. Um, you want a, a repeating pattern with a different offset size rows and possibly spaces between them. You can use brick. Uh, and then Veronoi, you want a set of tiles, but you want those tiles to be a bit irregular. You don't want them to just be square. Uh, the one we didn't talk about, wave texture, that does what I did in the first tutorial. Uh, and since I did it in the first tutorial, I'm not going to waste time on it. But if you want to make repeating waves between 0 and 1 along the x, y axis or in a circle, uh, you can use wave texture or you can just do the math. And that's it. Thanks.